Welcome to the I Rock Knits and the Yarn Harder podcast. We're in Virginia Beach together. I'm Corey. I'm Amber. And welcome to everyone who is going to watch this from our hotel room live. <laughs> <laughs> it took a few minutes to figure out where to sit and we have the iPad propped up. So if it doesn't crash on us, we'll be good. Um, we came to Virginia Beach on Thursday. Um, Amber flew through Atlanta and I threw flew through New York City and we both were delayed. My delay wasn't so bad though. I flew, I went from my house to Indy and then from Indy to Atlanta. I did not fly from my house to Indy, I drove. <laughs> but then I flew from Indianapolis to Atlanta and there was something wrong with the control tower in Atlanta because there was a plane that I needed to be on that would then take me to Virginia that circled for three hours. It said, I didn't hear that part, but I did hear that Atlanta was having control tower issues. It said, well, maybe not circled for three hours. It left from Nashville on time, made it to Atlanta, and then couldn't land. So it was three hours delayed. So yeah, three hours. It circled for three hours. Oh my gosh. And then I needed to be on that plane. But my, so I was delayed twice, but only, but that wasn't bad because I was in a seat, right? Like I had bathrooms, I had <laughs> yes, concessions if I wanted to. I did them. not have a bathroom. <laughs> she had a much worse trip than I did. So I flew with Renee and Matt, um, nitroverted and multi-crafty guy, and we left Minneapolis and went to JFK, which I haven't done before coming here, and our bathroom broke when we got, to, we had a close connection in JFK. Renee ran ahead, because she got off the plane first, thinking she could individually hold our plane for us <laughs> by lying down on the runway <laughs> and saying, they're coming. So we got on that shuttle bus where you gotta go down and onto the tarmac and get on the shuttle bus. And then we went all the way around this loop and came back and we come running up to the gate and, and we, we hadn't been to the bathroom because we ran off the other plane and we, we all three. And so she said, yes, you could go, but we're gonna close the door. So we ran to the bathroom key part of that story because when we got on the plane the bathroom was broken and so they called maintenance and they swapped out the bathroom i don't know how you do that i don't know when that happened because it wasn't they didn't come down the aisle with the new bathroom but i the attendant said they're like a porta potty and they can just in and out put a new one in and so maybe they did that when they got in and i didn't see it happen do you think that's how they clean them i don't know i have no idea but the second one flooded the, t the plane. So we were waiting and waiting and then the captain comes and stands there and he goes, if everyone will direct their attention to the back of the plane, we have a problem. Oh. And the plane like, was like white foam, you know, it was a clean bathroom, I'm thinking, but you can't take off, right? So we waited and waited and waited. And finally, they said, we're gonna switch planes. So we had to all get off and I'm, not sitting in, the, in an ideal seat. The woman next to me had a, a body odor issue and the woman across the aisle had a screaming toddler. And so by the time I walked off, I was just like rattled and I was trying to be kind. But Renee and Matt came up and they're like, oh my gosh, we, so we go across the aisle, they have to clean that plane, they're gonna put us on that plane. We get over there and we got out on the runway and we had too much fuel. And so we had to wait and burn off fuel. So they did, they went run, 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 run for like a half an hour while we burnt off flu. Oh, it was so while she's stranded at JFK, I'm sitting here with some of our friends with the dinner reservation for seven o'clock, which we thought was going to be three hours too much time. So we were waiting. They finally got here. Yeah, we came running in at about with 12 seconds to spare. Yeah, right. <laughs> So anyway, it was not a, it's not a travel woes, but it's not a great way to get anywhere, but you can't, you know, you have to have a bathroom. So thank goodness we went, cause we were probably on the tarmac for at least an hour the, on the first wait. And then the second wait, at least a half an hour or, or longer. I mean, we were probably delayed easily by two hours. Cause I kept texting the person that was gonna pick us up here and saying, you know, not 435, not 5, 530, not 536. How close does she live to the airport? Angela um, Beagle mom knitter hi Angela um, she's here but she lives in um, over kind of by Richmond so an hour and a half uh, but she was at the yarn store with just killing time yeah just waiting she's like I'm fine I can stay here they don't close till eight <laughs> it's 
So she's thanks. super kind. So, yeah, she's <laughs> really nice. So anyway, we got here. We're having a great time. We are both um, functioning on very little sleep in this moment yes. because we I talked until 2 a.m. last <laughs> night, just giggling, looking at Facebook and YouTube and Instagram videos. Why do you start doing that? after midnight right after midnight that was the thing we didn't start doing it at eight right it was 12. <laughs> <laughs> you get in bed and then you're like i'm just gonna check my phone one more time and then you go down a rabbit hole and then when you fell asleep i read the news for just a little longer it makes me sleepy probably just hurts my brain <laughs> which just makes me tired my dog videos i got the giggles at 1 30 and then i couldn't settle, settle down so and everyone's waiting downstairs for us because we slept in as long as we could, but we were both awake at eight. And then, which is seven our time. I've been working a lot, and so uh, I have a podcast, so don't go over to my channel. <laughs> there won't be anything there. Well, she could post this on yours, too, yeah. this little teeny blurb, and we could say, Amber's working Soon. because someone at work quit. And yeah. she, she worked 20 hours the day before we left in a row. It was a long day. I did on my way out. I often tell Rick I quit my job <laughs> every day. I leave work and I'm like, oh, by the way, I quit. <laughs> I always go back, but I tell him I quit every day. And I did say that day. It was a half a work week. And you did get someone hired, yes. but now you have to train them. Right. And and it's, she's doing really, really well, but it will be, you know, it's a long process to get somebody trained. But um, I'm not knitting a lot behind the scenes. I've been crocheting a lot, but I don't have that to show. Um, but I started something here. And I have a small finished object. Well, yeah. it's not small, but we can talk about it. And it's a perfect thing to talk about with Corey here because Corey fixed it for me. Well, kind of. We, we did a, as much fix as we think it can have. Right. So I knit the Mix and Match Cardigan by Knitting Expat, which is Nina Phillip. I knit this cardigan a year ago in January for Heidi out of Miss Babs Yauta in the old gold colorway. And it's stunning. I love it. Heidi loves it. She wears it all the time. So this is just a, it's just a completely plain, simple yep. cardigan. Uh, the thing that I like the most about it is it has the option for a high-low hem. And so it's much longer in the back than it is in the front. And I love that. However, I have come... And you loved your yarn. I do love the yarn. The yarn is... Because you talked about it on the podcast once. Haiku Sueño, which is a uh, merino bamboo. I think it might be 80-20, but it might be 85-15. I don't know, but it is very soft. It's a little pilly. Well, that's a decrease. It's a little bit pilly, but I've tried to wear it a lot. Not a lot. I don't know. I've probably worn it six or seven times, right? There's a lot of friction that goes on It looks more like it has um, halos and pills, right? Oh, maybe. It's, I mean, it does, but they're, they're consistent. Yeah, it is consistent. <laughs> it just kind of looks a little bit, yeah. You can yeah, you can kind of see it's kind of all the way along. But it, that doesn't bother me, right? Like, I don't mind that. And um, it's super soft, and it's very drapey, and I thought that it would be a nice fiber for... I'm picking my hair out of it. Look at that. Um, I thought it would be a nice fiber for keeping cool. It'll keep you cool, and it'll keep you warm. However, I have discovered that I don't have broad shoulders, and there's no fabric, and this is no fault of anybody's but my own for not looking, Right here, when you're setting up your raglan, there were yeah, no this stitches. Comes, this really, um, yeah, can, maybe you can show both sides and kind of see. This look makes it look like there is fabric there, but there really, this is this is the front. There's no neck. There's no neck that goes across the front. And it then just it starts over here. Down. And here I have another, sh I have another yeah. sweater to kind of show where this one has all this neck because it comes more to the front. And this this mix and match cardigan is a V that starts here and V's down, so it's a very wide V and it doesn't stay on my shoulders. And while I love it and I love how it feels and I love the color, it wasn't wearable. When I brought it, I wore it in the airport and I was frustrated because it kept sliding down and I just kept feeling like I was pulling it up. So Corey said, well, you also thought you made too big a size. Yeah. I mean, that is also probably an issue that... Yeah, it, it's, it is it, not uh, the ideal fit, but that is a, that's a me I mean, problem. an oversized cardigan would be okay, but it is, it maybe was, you could have made one size smaller. Right. Yes. And in addition. So Corey thinks, or thought she could fix it, and she really, I mean, she did. She made it as wearable as it can be. So I'm going to let yeah. her talk about so how she did it, that. So, because it kept falling off, I have helped people who knit sweaters that are bulky or chunky and they're too heavy and that pulls the shoulders off or 
in this instance, something where it doesn't come around to the front. So what I did was I took a piece of cotton off the sample, off the, there's a free giveaway table. Yeah. I went and found some cotton and it was purple, but I, and it didn't matter. I would have used a coordinating color if I could have found one, but I tied a knot or anchored the yarn. And then I took it all the way across that seam at the back of her neck, all the way over to here. But see, it's now on a, it's movable. Yeah, it's movable. So we, she can gather it. And then I, I tr she tried it on because I, I gave, I pulled it all in. So she kind of, it's almost basted in there. And then I just gathered it up. And then on the other shoulder, we kind of checked to see how much she might need it in. So this is adjustable at any yeah. time. Like if she's like, no, it's still falling off, she can pull it in further. And so we just put that in. Now I've done this for a couple of my own sweaters. Um, anything that sits too low on the chest and you have like a scoop neck or an opening, you can raise that up by going around that. This would be the same as a single crochet mm -hmm. edge where you gathered it across the back, but this is faster. And you can take it out. Right, and you can take it out if it doesn't work. With a single crochet, you're experimenting the whole way across to right. get the gather in the right place. And so then when she put it on yesterday, it fits much better and you can't see that purple. Like yeah. it, she has hidden that right. I mean, if you pull it, can you see it there? No. Right there. Yeah. You can see. Barely. Right, yeah. right there. You can't see it. She put it right in that um, crease from the ribbing. And so you can't see it from the back at all. And it's, I suppose it's a little bit ruffly. Yeah. But my hair covers that. Right. And you, and, and you could take more or less depending on what you need. So see how she gets that little gather in there and then that just lays on the back of her neck. But it yes. makes the sweater in the moment wearable. And so if you have something that you're not wearing, you're not out anything. If you try it. If you try it. If you're not wearing it anyway, then you may as well try it. So several people yesterday, and we just left the ends there so she just has to tuck them under. So, but, so okay, so it is oversized, right? You can tell but it now pulls up on her neck. Right. It stays up here instead of this Before seam. it was, what do you think? It was down here? Yeah, it would For kinda, sure. It would fall to there. And yeah. then now, and I wore it when she fixed it in the late evening, I wore it for the rest of the day and I didn't have any trouble with it at all. So I'm super thrilled. And I know you've told me that trick before, but I never would have done it. Yeah, <laughs> never. So I'm so happy she did yeah. it. Yeah, so I run I run threads in a lot of my knitwear when I need things to kind of be fixed and see if I can make a fix. Um, we had someone yesterday that her raglan was way too long and she doesn't want to, you know, rip out the whole sweater and re-knit the sweater. And so we talked about turning it inside out and basting with a piece of cotton out some fabric right there. Just like you would sew if you were a seamstress mm -hmm. or you were tailor, you would sew that fabric out of there. So baste it out and see if that gives you a better fit. And then you can always sew it or use a crochet hook to fix it. But I'm also glad that I did it because now I know this can't happen. When I look at patterns in the future, that just kind of go from tiny, here. Yeah, I'm gonna have to have some sort of, if it's a top down raglan, I'm gonna need, yeah. after I place that raglan marker, I'm gonna need there to be more than two stitches or three stitches or however many much this pattern had. Because then I did where this, I didn't tell, this is the antler cardigan by oh, Tim yeah. Can Knits. Yeah. Which you is, got lots of compliments on that. It's the third thing that I made, which I think is just hysterical that I knit a bottom up cabled cardigan because I wanted a sweater. And so it is, I found this, I think they still sell them, this label on Knit Picks that says this <laughs> I took- I didn't see that. It of says, course you had it on. <laughs> this took forever, <laughs> which it did take forever. When it's your third thing that you made, it took forever. And then I put hand wash, dry fly. It's a super wash cardigan. I could wash it in the washing machine. I just thought those were fun little labels to put in at the time, but um, I'm really, I like the fit of this. So now going forward, you live and you learn, right? Like I'm, I'm happy I made this, I can wear it. I can wear it around the house. Big front that comes over, like Corey's cardigan that yep. she's wearing. Yeah. So this is the Belinda. So uh, Martha runs this retreat, Knit Crit, and um, she just gathers a bunch of her friends to come to the beach um, during off peak uh, season so we get the hotel room for cheaper and then it's restaurant week here so everyone is on their own for meals and a lot of the businesses are closed I mean they're not open because the beach is not really being 
It's been rainy and foggy pretty it's much. It's still beautiful, though. Yeah, we're just... she's coming from how many inches of snow? Yeah, 31 inches this winter, 31.5, and it's snowing now. So we're going to, we broke the record already. So yeah, to be able to walk outside last night just with a light rain jacket on and go to the restaurant was And great. if I wasn't here on a rainy beach, I would be at work in a warehouse. So yeah, and we're no, all good. No complaints. We're, it's all good. But Martha had a knit along um, last year. So um, the, we all knit the shore cardigan last mm -hmm. year and Amber wants to still knit that. So I wore that yesterday, but this year she had a knit along for Bon Marie Burns. And so you could knit anything at all of hers. And you know, if you watch my podcast at all, that I've been knitting, I knit this in um, uh, January when I took my husband to the Barrett Jackson. So this is a great cardigan. It's very well Beautiful. written. It's, um, you knit it from the bottom up. So you're knitting from here all the way around, all the way over to here. So you have a, a cable panel in here and then it's got also the cable panel up the back. Yep. So you're coming around. So you have something to do on every row because even when you're coming back, you're doing some ribbing in these sections. So you're knit pearl, knit pearl, or knit two pearls. So they weren't rest rows. Right. It was something to yeah, do. Yeah, there was it. something to do on every, every one. The comments that I read on this pattern online was that the neckline was too scooped, too low. And if you go out and look at the pat, I would agree that there were a number of them that were scooped too far down. Did you they, take pictures? I did. I would say it doesn't look too yeah, low. Yeah, so I um, I read some people's notes, you know, beforehand and decided that, and I like a raglan fit and I know what the length of my raglan should be, but it, since this could have gone down further, then that meant my raglan would be down further, which means that I would have underarm trouble if I didn't keep my raglan short. So I just did some measuring. When I got to picking up the button bands, and I didn't show, maybe you can see my buttons if I come in really close. They're beautiful. So that little thing in the middle is raspberry. I bought three sets of buttons before. <laughs> the first pair I bought were pink, and purple and pink was just not gonna. Those are pretty. But when I got to the neckline, so I did the button band on both sides first, and then I picked up around the neckline, and I used a smaller needle than what was called for so that I would pick up in a smaller circumference um, that in that way. Then the first row of ribbing, I did knit two, purl two, knit two, purl two, until I got to right here. And then when I got right here, across this section, I did knit two, purl, knit three, purl two, knit three, purl two, knit three, purl two. And then when I got across the back, across the cabled section, I did knit two, purl two. Then over here I did knit three, purl two, knit three, purl two, across here. Because when I went around the next time, I decreased that knit three down to knit two. Oh, that's brilliant. I was thinking, why are you? I wasn't so, sure why you were telling us that. <laughs> there we go. So I, these are all knit two purl twos, but the first round of it was knit three purl two. Brought it uh, in. Brought it in. Brought, and where do I want to bring it up from? Just like yours. Yep. I want to bring it up across the back and up onto the shoulders so that it comes up onto the shoulders and fits me better. So... And someone else on their um, on their notes said that they had decreased down in the ribbing, mm -hmm. and so I just thought, well, it's a good way to try. It wasn't a necessarily. Uh, did I know that that was going to be enough, right? But I figured I'm taking down a number of stitches right here across this whole, um, and a little bit right here. Yes, so you yes, the all cable. the way till I get to the cable in the back. So it was kind of like what I did with yours. Yeah. It's just not in that center section. Then I went down to knit two, purl two for the rest of it and bound off tightly, where they usually say bound off loosely. I have a pretty, this is not, there's not a lot of give in that. I just bound off tightly, it's beautiful. tried it on before I put the buttons on, and I was willing to rip it back and decrease some more if I would have needed to. So, but mine does not look nearly as scooped as some of them out there. And the scoops aren't um, unflattering on some people. That's just you know, not what people wanted. Right, It yeah, it was more of a people going, gosh, I just don't really, and I'm pretty busty, and so I just didn't know how much of that I would like. And I always wear something un underneath my sweater. So then if you if you get this look going on, right. you know, sometimes then you've got your thing. I, I don't know. See, so, I just like yours better. So I think I just need to not knit V-neck cardigans. Well, that's that could be a possibility. Because I mean, this just yeah. looks better. Which, this is sloppy, right? I get that. But well, yeah. I need that. And then this is um, Haiku... Um, Kenzie, yes, and I did talk about it <laughs> briefly because I had to pull the guard hairs out as well, I knit When this. she was knitting it, I even said, 
because we weren't together. We were talking on the iPad, and I said, I thought Kenzie had a lot of guard hairs, and she's like, oh, yes, I've pulled them off. I have a little pile. <laughs> I just can't stand those little long gray hairs. But this it does have a little bit of a halo, see? But, like, if I would find one like this, I would just pull them out. I have not, way. like, taken a gleaner to it to see if that would catch some of them. But I, yeah, I think it's pretty though. I, you know, like, most I think of them are the gone. Yarn is pretty. And most of the long ones. If are people gone. can't tell, if you've never knit with Kinsey before, I mean, it's a rustic wool, but it has these little flecks of a brighter color. It's yeah. a dark raspberry, but it has these yeah, tiny. Yeah, there little, you can see it in the the light from the window that's looking out on the ocean. It's we're so on the ninth pretty. floor, so it's super pretty. Oh, I should, I'll shoot a little picture. Yeah. So we can say where we, I keep having to scoot back, back on the bed. But, short legs. How are you? You oh, have okay. short legs too. I'm touching. <laughs> I, maybe the weight. But I'm, I'm, I'm squishing down. <laughs> I'm like, but you also, you have you talked about this? You talked about this as a finished object, didn't you? So you already talked about how you no, knit your. Oh. No, I didn't. Yeah. So I know that I've knit hundreds of sweaters and people think that I never have a problem. Not true. Sometimes you're knitting at night. So I got all the way, I knit one sleeve and it was a little tight and I knew that, but I was okay because I thought once I block it, I'm gonna get a little bit of give, so I'm okay with it being snug. I wouldn't say that it had um, negative ease, but it was, you know, perfect. perfect. It, yeah, it was t tight. And um, and now you can tell that I've just got a little bit, I, there's not a lot extra there. So then I knit the second sleeve and I got all the way down to the bottom and I was gonna do the ribbing and I did um, turned up cuffs. Uh, and I had way more stitches. Ten. That's a lot of stitches. <laughs> and I was like, how can I have ten more stitches over here? Well, you can't. I mean, I had extra. Well, yeah, ten it stitches. It was probably two would inches. Okay, five. five sti yeah, yeah two five. inches. Five stitches. So I had to rip the whole sleeve back out. And all the way up, I had ten extra stitches. Even under the arm. Like, I don't know when I divided <laughs> Like then I thought, well maybe I like offset the sleeve and put too like many it. stitches on and and honestly when you're knitting on deadline, which I was because I don't knit for pleasure a whole lot because I'm usually designing, I knew I had to get this done. I didn't spend a lot of time figuring out what I had done wrong. I just fixed it. I was just like, okay, I need 10 less stitches. I'm knitting two together several times under the armpit and then going down. And then I went over and marked all the decreases on this and matched them up distance wise so that I knew that I would get down to the right number so I knit a third sleeve on this sweater Three sleeves. and this is not the first time that <laughs> Corey has had to re-knit sleeves as we move forward on my podcast talking about sweaters I have made sleep sweat um mistakes on sleeves look before like your back is not like your back is centered it's I know. not shifted by so how did stitches. I have well and you did cast on stitches under the arm so I'm just wondering if I cast on like I didn't cast on any over here or didn't cast on as, but I didn't want to rip this one out because it fit. Right. Because I could have had the bigger sleeve be the right one and gone and fixed the smaller sleeve if that would have been the problem, but it wasn't. I said yes, yeah. I kind of like my sleeves to be a little tight. Not tight enough that your stitches are going to spread over here and it's going to look ill-fitting, but I feel like if you have a little negative ease in your sweater, it kind of holds your arm skin. <laughs> Tightens it up a little. Yeah. Just like a little... Yeah. Mother's hug. I'm 20 years older than she is, so arm extra <laughs> crepey. Isn't that? What oh, that's it? a good word. <laughs> that's what they call it when you get older. You get crepe cream. That is hysterical. I don't know that I'd done that, but now, oh, now you're I do. not 58. <laughs> yes, I get those info commercials with the actresses who say, I'm "Using this on my." Okay, so we're gonna quick do uh, works in progress because then people are waiting for us to go to lunch. They don't expect us to come down at a retreat. They don't expect us to come down early. Some of them go at eight o'clock. Melanie, Melanie and Carla would have been down there at eight. And some of them get down there for breakfast. Yeah, but they also go to bed much earlier. Okay, I am, I've just cast on, we're going to the Zombie Knit Apocalypse in Minnesota in June. And they're having, they have a six month knit along that goes along with that. And so I made a promise, committed to knitting the same pattern as someone else for bonus points and we have to have it done by the end of february and i lied because <laughs> it's not happening but it's because work got right. away right right you have someone quit so i started this um pattern by abby knits a b b y e knits and it's called the party top 
and it is a cropped cardigan with, I don't know, I don't even think that's a three quarter sleeve. It's not like a half sleeve. That might be Abby E knits. Cause then it's Abby E doll. Oh yeah, you're like, right. Uh, Abby Elizabeth. I bet that's right. Or something. Yep. Anyway, if someone's looking for it. So it's, it is a, it's a fun pattern. I don't know that it's going to suit me and I'm okay with that. Um, it's, it's super cute. It's a really cute pattern. And you wear a ton of dresses. Yeah. And so if it suits me, I will love it. And if it doesn't, then I'll give it away. I don't have a waist that goes in. To your have, sister. Yeah. I'll like not give it away to just random person on the street. Um, cause I think, yeah, I think my sister will really, my sister does have a waist. We're just shaped different. I'm shaped like a box and she's not. And so it, it tip. It, this lady tips in just a little bit and I don't so I don't know how it's gonna look it calls for four inches of negative ease in the pattern um, I don't wear negative ease in my clothing however clearly I shouldn't knit this much positive ease in a sweater either right and so we're just gonna I see. think a lot of people make that mistake though they don't want yeah. it to be too tight and so they knit a bigger size well and this is a very drapey yarn and so had I knit this size in a non superwash wool that wasn't going to give as much it would have fit better so I, I did too much ease with a yarn that draped, but that's okay. It's comfortable and I really, really like it. So, but this, I started this, I was still on the ribbon yesterday yeah. and I felt like that was a lot of knitting when we were just sitting, but this colorway is so pretty. I don't know if you can, that looks about right, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah. It's called Clam City and it's by Diane from Suburban Stitcher in her Merino DK. Where am I? I always look over here, so this whole thing I'm probably Well, I could have turned the no, whole iPad around. But then you would have looked in the wrong way because no, you're used true. to So Clam City, and Diane's yarn is just absolutely beautiful. I love it. It's very soft. It's the same base um, that Leading Men Fiber Arts and a lot of other indie dyers use for their DK, and I yeah, really like it. I used uh, for the Fiber French all. So something, so. I mean, I tend to knit plain things right like this is gorgeous but I never would have picked it although I clearly should have because I think it's beautiful <laughs> but I don't pick a lot of detail so I really like this because it has an eyelet detail on the sleeve and I think that's gonna be a lot of fun so yeah I'm really liking it um, I have a while it's supposedly I don't think I brought the paper that show that tells how much yarn you need but I think you can knit this this pattern in any size that it is offered with four skeins of DK or less. So that's fantastic. Does it say? Yeah, it does. It takes between 450 and 900 yards and that with that amount of yarn you could knit a 28 inch to 48 inch sweater. So it doesn't have a lot of, you know, yeah, it doesn't go up real wide, high. But that has four inches of negative ease. So the actual sweater is between a 24 and a 43. But it's a top-down raglan. So, and most people's necks don't get progressively larger and larger and larger. So you could probably make the XXL if you were bigger and then keep, keep increasing until it fits you in the bust and the raglan. Yeah, so I have four skeins of this DK. So even if it doesn't suit me, I'm using four skeins of stash on a beautiful sweater that will fit my sister. So I really like it. Um, I'm not getting gauge perfectly. I didn't gauge swatch before I left. No, well, she didn't. You didn't have time. Sweater. And then I got chastised, and um, but it's gonna block. Imagine <laughs> it's gonna block out. But it's a very simple chart um, for the sleeve, and I really like it. Um, we'll see how it fits. But what's really nice is I also brought. Did I bring it over here? Have you talked about try it on tubing yet? Yep, last podcast, but yeah. go ahead. <clears throat> Absolutely. And so I have my try it on tubing like I was going to get this sweater all the way done and need to know how long it was going to be to bind off. But you might have tried it on when you broke for the underarms. Maybe. Like That's I'm a possibility. Even get there. But yeah, if you watch Amber, and you, this is on her channel, I don't, we don't know how we're doing this, but then I showed how to use it on my last podcast because someone asked that question on gotcha. the very last one and wanted me to show how you shove your needle into the tip and pull it through. And so I did. And it just reminds me, so you can buy it. I, I feel like you should get it from here, right? Machine knitting to yep. die for. Yep. But it also looks like fish tank tubing. Oh, see, and I thought it was like medical grade tubing, but I think you could probably get it at Home Depot. Yes. So, or <laughs> your garage, depending on what, yes. what you do for a living. And so, yeah, I really like it. Um, so I, I have this, and the reason I brought that brought it along or have it in this bag for when I do get to that point is everybody has a different torso length. 
And so a crop sweater on one person isn't gonna necessarily be a crop sweater on another. And I don't know if the pattern tells you to do that, but I'm gonna definitely need to try it on when I get to that point and see where I'm supposed to be stopping it. Because like Carla, our friend Carla has a very long torso and if she cropped it the same point as me, it would hit me in the hips. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so absolutely. Anyway. That's why I'm doing that. But yeah, so this is just what I'm gonna knit on all day. And today. that was not the best retreat knitting to start. Um, set up your rag ones but once you got it set up you've had no problem having yeah, it be it nice was super easy inning. right like when you're increasing at one point i'm increasing right up against a marker and when i wasn't so corey suggested that i hook a second stitch marker so i have one that's marking where i place that's a raglan increase here and then on the one where i'm supposed to knit one stitch past and then increase as opposed to butting it right up against there she had me hang a second marker and that did help i finally it finally yeah, once you yeah once yep. you got going it was better but you were also helping someone with some crochet blankets yesterday and stuff too so yeah. you'll get a lot more knit today well we're not gonna get done and we're going to the yarn <laughs> store too so <laughs> knitting <laughs> retreats are not about knitting nope never no they're about um chocolate and snacks there are a lot of snacks down there, <laughs> there are a lot of snacks down there Okay, I am on this retreat. I'm working on two things, um, but uh, this one's the one I have up here. The other one's downstairs. This is my sugar maple, and um, I usually don't show works in progress on my podcast, but because um, I'm always talking about finished sweaters, this one I have already knit. I wear it a ton. I bought this yarn here last year, um, and it is a fade kit. But I am just fading, and I've not knit a lot with speckled yarns. Uh, at all I, I just have not I don't purchase them and so I thought you should at least give it a go so this is gonna go into uh, the pink with the like neon green and then it'll go into even more pink and then even more green at the bottom so it'll be bottom heavy so what do you think about the speckled yarn you said give it a go are um, you happy would you do it again it's not nothing about the yarn it's about the tie you know the right uh, it's okay uh, yeah Th this colorway maybe feels a little um, childish i was gonna say juvenile yeah at the top but once i think i get to the other i really liked the kit in the you know not till you wind it up do you know how many speckles it really is right. gonna have so the sugar maple is a raglan top down short sleeved and then it has an offset front piece that is going to angle down so it gets longer and longer and longer in the front so it has like a v in the front and it's tunic length when you finish this are you going to jump ahead in your sweater list and talk about the sugar maple Oh, I might. Because your other sugar maple is, yeah, is stunning. Not that this one's not pretty, but it is a tonal gradient. And you got it, it was dyed specifically in your size for yes. that pattern. Yeah. And it is beautiful. Yeah. And Where was that from? Fiber Twisted, Art? Twisted Fiber Arts. And they dye yarn to go with projects. So you get the length of the colors that you need for the project. So you order for your size or what size you're gonna make a shawl and then you get the gradient happen so I'm making this happen I'm I alternated skeins here to make that happen so it's gonna be a completely different look mm -hmm. but I wouldn't want to make the same one twice I don't have a lot of um, fingering weight sweaters uh, short sleeve that I can wear in the summer so it's gonna be fun though It'll, yeah it is kind of like a party like it's a party top yeah just we're, like this one <laughs> it's kind of gonna be like the, the fun top and I just wanted to use up the yarn before I came back to this retreat and bought more. At the, you got it at the yarn store that we're getting ready to go to. Yeah, because they have a, they have, they invite indie dyers in. Mm -hmm. So we're going to yarn club. The yarn club. Yeah. And then um, they invite, so there will be card tables of indie dyers in the shop today where you can get, this is bad wolf girl yarn. Yep. So one I've not ever heard of her until last year her name she's a lovely person she has beautiful dark hair like I can see her in my head but I don't remember and she was here with her husband right yeah. yeah yeah so I just she had these kits already made up and so I I purchased the kit and then the guilt sets in when you go to a retreat and you're gonna buy more yarn at the same store probably from the same kind of people and you haven't knit the stuff from so what I last bought year. last year when I came I didn't buy from the yarn club I bought it at a yarn store in Norfolk and I don't remember the name of the store but that was it Roz or something with the owner? She was lovely as well. That's the yarn store that Angela sat waiting okay. for. Okay, so I bought. <laughs> Angela could tell us where she was. For a, for a, it was a Romy Hill wrap. Remember that? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Well, and you know what? Okay, Anybody who's watching this has done the same thing. Right, they all <laughs> understand. We're, we're pre preaching to the choir here. And it was a beautiful wool silk 
for a drapey. I will tell you, I'll look it up and tell you and you can put the pattern down. Oh, because yeah. Because it's a beautiful, it's a, a rectangular shape and it has slits for the arms that you put your arms through. So it's just, you basically, you know, you cast off and you cast back on, right? Like it was a very simple sleeve. I don't think there's any ribbing around it or anything. And Carla and Melanie bought the same pattern and yarn and I haven't seen, I haven't seen either of theirs finished objects either. Well, and then last night we had show and tell, and some of the women were hilarious at the show and tell. So they were a little older. Yes, older there's than a, us. There's a wide range of people here, which is really nice that you, that, um, yeah. We have a 21 year, at our table, which we sit with different people, right? But we do have our kind of group of friends that we, we came to see, and so, you know, we're, we're sitting with them a lot. But at our table, we have a, what, 21 year old, yep. 22 year old? And how old do you think Jane is? She is, uh, yeah. Do you think she's 80? Oh, yeah. Or uh, older? Yeah. So, I mean, there's a big range of people, and they, I mean, and a lot of these people are coming from knit groups, right? So, this isn't a group of 50 or 60 or however many strangers that are sitting together. So, you know, you have relationships within each kind of, you know, little group that, that has going on, and they were hysterical. One lady oh. held up a shawl. It was called the Bad Oyster, and I didn't get the reference. Somebody said it's because you don't pearl. There's no pearl. In, in a bad oyster, there's no pearl. And so one lady was holding it up for show and tell and kind of showing it off and telling about it. And a lady at her table said, oh, is that the bad oyster? I hated, hated that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it got really, I don't know if it was because it was late or because there was wine in the room. But it, it, was it got a little raucous. But yeah, we're sitting with Kelsey. Hi, Kelsey. She showed her first sweater um, yesterday in a beautiful blanket. Beautiful blanket. Um, and she's a 21-year-old graduate from um, New And she's a, her... Her mom is a friend of mine from Richmond when I lived in Glen Allen, and so she's here. And then uh, we're sitting with Karen from Glen Allen and Jane, who I don't even know where Jane came from. I, do you feel like she's local, kind of? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I she did. drove here. Yeah, I feel like, yeah. So, and she, she's kind she's of a, fun. Yeah, we're having a really good time. And Kelsey's to, sweat, or blanket was made out of Veda's Choice. Um, and did you know? I did not. Oh, did you know that Vanna's Choice yarn, if you buy that, so if you're looking for a um, kind of a workhorse acrylic, it's acrylic, right? It's not wool. It's acrylic. Oh, yeah. I'm pretty sure. Um, at Joann's or Michael's or, or any type of big box craft store. Vanna White, who's what the Vanna's Choice, so I'm sure most, you know, Wheel of Fortune, right? The lady who she used to turn and now yeah. she taps. Um, <laughs> she donates all the money, not <laughs> just. your logo. Yeah, I, used I used to, to turn, turn and now, now I, I tap. tap. <laughs> She donates all the money, not just a proceed of the money. Because, you know, you get a lot of that proceeds of this or a portion of, of the money. All of the money from Vanna's Choice supports a charity. And I don't remember what it is. Is it Cats and Dogs? No. It's a charity. We'll put it on the screen. Well, I'll find out. Yeah. All yeah. the money. Kelsey, if I... I didn't take a... I took a picture of Kelsey's blanket yesterday because it, it, it was chevrons and she knit it modularly. It was really stunning. And I didn't get a the best picture of her so I could put it in though yeah um, but now yeah. I'm gonna buy like if yes I'm gonna start buying more Vanish Choice when I'm looking for that rather than you know a Hobby Lobby or a Red Heart because I do enjoy a good yeah and her cause. weekender was marled and it that was, was really interesting that was cool too we saw a lot of really nice projects yesterday and then the show and tell was even more and tonight there's a try it on event where you can bring an item I should bring this antler Yes, you should. You can bring an item, you know, and you don't have to worry about what size it is because people know what size they are, right? They're going to, and wool stretches. And so you can, you know, you just, and people can look and yeah, try things on. And I'm, I'm excited. I think it's going to be fun. It's nice to, like, at that moment, I could have maybe known that a v-neck isn't perfect on me, right? I should also say, while I've been knitting a long time, I don't knit a lot of sweaters for no, me. No, you haven't. So this is, I have knit, for me, this was my first sweater. My second sweater was the Palette Cardigan by Lisa Ross, which also is a V-neck, but not as drastic of a V-neck. It comes over and then goes down. And um, your Cahoots, Cahootless Cahoots, it's the Her Owl Cahoots sweater, but I did the Owlless version. Uh, and that's it. And this, four. Right, so it doesn't... So there's he, still so, a lot of a learning curve, right? I've knit just, I've knit more sweaters for Rick than I've knit for myself. Right. And so, yeah, and I, I do think that you you do learn something every time you knit a sweater. Yep. Right. <laughs> Even after I'm on sweater 116. <laughs> Is it really 116? No, I have no idea. 
I'll bet. I, well, I've been knitting for 30, over 30 years. Did and my first thing, them? yes, they're all on, I could go out and do a, a search. Are they all on Ravelry? Yeah, every single one. Maybe I'll count them on the plane. Yeah, because um, I have a lot of kids' sweaters in that, though. So when we, still counts. you know, yeah, because I knit for my nieces and nephews every single year. And sweaters. Kylie has some sweaters and Ross has, but yeah, they would, that would be out there. It's just, sometimes you brain fart, right? That's you're fine. Like, not late at night and you're not looking, you're you're watching season four of Madam Secretary. <laughs> and you get to the bottom of the whole sleeve before you realize. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I was telling a story last night that, and it's everything. How many pairs of socks have I knit? Oh, yeah, 116. Well, at least. That's our number. You know, or, and um, I was watching a football game this year, binding off the top ribbing of, of two different socks. You know, I, it was a pair of socks for Rick for Christmas. And... It was a Bears game, and we were playing. It was a super interesting, you know, like, edge-of-your-seat game. And when I finished that sock, I said, oh, yeah, this is going to be hard for you to get on. <laughs> I got very excited, and I cast off too tight. And so on Christmas morning, he's putting his socks on, and he puts one on, and it slips right on. The other one, he goes, oh, yeah, that was that football game. <laughs> it, exactly. It fits, but, yeah, after 116 yeah, well, or whatever pairs of yeah. socks, I still do the same thing. There's always something. We're not perfect. We act like we are, but we're not. <laughs> Actually, most people know both of us are kind of hot right. mess. That's why they sit with us at the table. <laughs> because we have had a good time. Yes, we have had a good time. We are super fortunate to be able to travel and see our friends because we have friends all over the country now from meeting at knitting retreats. And so you don't see them in your neighborhood or your right? local Yeah, at group. our table we have Virginia, um, Northern Illinois, Southern Illinois, Tennessee, Minnesota, Nashville. Oh, well, that's... Yeah, and Jane. And Jane, Which who I think is in Virginia. So yeah, we've had it. It's just so much fun. I love it. If you have, and and I know we talk about retreats all the time, but just if there's a retreat, small, large, this is a small retreat yeah. with very little um, organized activities. activities. And we love it, right? That's what we wanted. We want to, you know, visit with people. We don't have to have a, a strict schedule. While I love those retreats too, this one is not that way. And um, I went to my first retreat super anxious, super scared, didn't want to go, had an anxiety attack right before I left, um, and almost didn't go, and then went, and that was when I met Corey, and just plopped down at her table and was like, hey. <laughs> and I, and honestly, I we we probably talked until 2 a.m. that night. Yes, but and it, it wasn't was... the first table I plopped myself down at. I plopped myself down at a bunch of tables, and some of them weren't okay with that. Not that they weren't welcoming, but I'm a lot. <laughs> And yeah, I, I told a lot. story about my dead grandma and things have never been the same. That's true. Yeah, I, and Corey was just like. <laughs> and no, then, we laughed. It, yeah, we no, laughed. it was hysterical. And so yeah, it's just, you should go, right? Like this life-changing, that retreat has changed everything to where now I but get But I do hear from so people who time. say there are no retreats near me. I don't have a knitting group, that kind of thing. So you might have to be the person that makes one. And, and that that's was what me. Martha did. To, oh, the retreat. Right. I thought you meant me. Yeah. yeah like, well, yeah, you have to go somewhere to have yep. a knitting group. But that's what Martha did. She picked an off-season hotel that would have decent room rates for people so they could, if they could 90, get here, it could be cheap. $99. That's for the... When Corey shows you the ocean, know that like every room in this hotel is oceanfront. So it's just right there. Yeah. I mean, just, the, the sand is below us. We're ten, right here. Ten feet from the back door. And it's ninety nine. And then there are restaurants night. within walking distance, yeah. and so everybody's on their own. And she just by what did she say six years ago last night? Yep. This is the sixth year. I didn't come the first couple of years. This is my second year here. Um, she invited her friends. Basically, she just said, "I'm going to have this retreat," and it filled. And she filled it on Ravelry. And people said that they've come back for six years and they met here, just like right. yep. us. Those two women that you know met here, and the one woman, yeah, talked about their friendship. So yeah, it, lots of fun. I love been, it. Yeah, it's been great. It really has. It's a lot of fun. But yeah, so just okay. I know. It is um, eleven fifty four, and we that our friends. Well, I did text them, but our friends have not seen us yet. <laughs> they're probably down there going, they're still sleeping, <laughs> and we're not. We're awake, and we've we've uh, showered, and we ha we're dressed, and we just need to go down and because we can go to the yarn store and That'd get some fun. lunch with everybody. So, we hope you guys. Um, Tune in again. We love you all uh, for for watching us when we're just, there were no notes. There will be no notes for this portion of the podcast. We're not sure how we'll put it up. Maybe we'll put it up in both places. 
but um, we just wanted to, because we're never together, even though we, we FaceTime all the time at home. So. Here. Okay. okay. So until we see you again, I hope you have so much fun with your knitting and keep it colorful. So this is out our room. So if you ha are afraid of heights, don't watch, but that's the boardwalk and the bike path. Oh, it just dripped water. But yeah, so we are right on the beach and then right down there is, I will try to move slower, is up here. And there were dolphins? Uh, oh yeah, there were dolphins yesterday. And the big giant ships go by and, but we are directly below this in a conference room knitting. So this is what we look at all day.